I could not think of a better guest to help us kick off the new year than my guest today. I have my dear friend Darlene Santor, although I never call her that. Those of us who know her and love her just call her Coach Dar. Uh, She's been on the podcast before. She was actually one of the panelists for our episode 100, the party and the panel discussion that we did, but I knew that she would bring the fire to help really encourage us all to go after what we want in the new year. And I, I'm i titling this one like the 2021 pep talk you didn't know that you needed. If you are not familiar with Coach Dar and her background, she is a board certified occupational therapist, a business executive, she's an author, a speaker. She's done so much in her career and she's really been a trailblazer for women. She was even awarded the most inspiring woman from the WNBA and today I think you are going to see why. Welcome back. This is the first guest episode of the new year. And there was only one person and it it worked out. It always works out, doesn't it? The exact way it's supposed to. And I have the honor of sharing just truly one of my favorite human beings on the planet, Coach Dar. So I'm so excited that we're doing this. (laughs) Thanks for having me on. And boy, I feel so honored to be the first guest coming out of what we just came out of into 2021. (laughs) I'm like fired up about this. It's true. I know. And, you know, we have been trying to connect for a podcast for a little while. I've had you on my mind. You've been on, so you've been a part of some really, really big milestones for powerhouse women. You were first on our episode 100 panel. And then we had you on our connection call series this summer. And then of course our big virtual event, but we've never actually sat down just to connect heart to heart for a podcast. So it was time. Well, I'm grateful. I'm grateful too in 2021 as well. (laughs) Exactly. We're fresh year, fresh start. And you, what inspired the timing of this was this great post that you put out. We're going to get to it in a little bit, but okay. essentially given us like the pep talk we didn't know we needed. I mean, it, <laughs> it was like true coach Dar style. So I want to, I want to dive in a little bit to your story, but we're going to come back to that. And really I, my wish is that this podcast becomes the episode that whenever women just need that little dose of Dar, they just need a little kick in the butt with a hug to follow. <laughs> They come back to this episode just to really be encouraged and uplifted and reminded of who they are, because Mm -hmm. I think this year is going to be, uh, it's going to be an incredible year for so many people. So before we do that, before I just unleash you, because there's so much wisdom and power and beauty and grace in your, every time you open your mouth, (laughs) I want to give people a sense of, of who you are in the world. And so we've shared parts of your story, of course, on different episodes, but, you know, tell us a little bit about even what this last year has been like for you, what you do for a living, who you are in the world, and let's catch people up to speed. Okay. So when you say, who am I? I think what comes to mind is a hope dealer. (laughs) And, you know, I'm someone who my best friend Jess actually came up with that. I didn't come up with that. And she said, you know, you should really put on your IG hope dealer. That should just be your title. And she's like, or someone said like greatness whisperer. (laughs) I love both. I was like, you sure not dog whisperer? Cause I love all dogs and we pretty much connect. And they're like, no, no, it's greatness whisperer. I was like, okay. But all to say, honestly, I'm just, uh, I love, I'm a therapist by background, occupational therapist. And my whole career in life has been in the service of others. And it's been trying to help people reach their fullest potential, their greatness. Because I think what happened, and I'm a confidence dealer too, I guess you'd say, because this all aligns to so many of us, it's natural. We lose steam or we lose confidence in ourselves or we go through hard times, 2020. And sometimes it's hard to get picked back up. Sometimes it's hard and we lose light or we lose vision. And 
we start to doubt ourselves. And God gave me this gift. Uh, For so many years, I kept thinking, God, what is my gift when I was younger? I'm like, I'm not musically gifted. It doesn't just come natural for math or anything like that. And then it came to me, I'm like, well, I'm a communicator. He gave me the gift to be able to teach and teach people so that they can then hear points or nuggets so they could take it and apply it to their life. And that then became as a therapist, what the world knows now is the coaching model in a lot of ways. And I feel blessed and honored that on a daily basis, which every day looks different, but it's generally, whether it's someone in pro sports, it could be someone on the, and you know, whether they're on the ice, the basketball court, the field, or they're in a boardroom, generally most peak performers, I get the blessing to come alongside with and keep them going to get their mental edge, to keep their mental well being, because in the world, you could learn a lot of things, but then the hardest part is the mental side of it. How do you sustain mentally? How do you keep your edge? How do you, your just mental well being and balance? Confidence goes within that and belief systems, and how do you engage in all that? So, mixing my therapy knowledge that I have as a therapist, and it's mostly in neuro, so the brain is my love, and moving it to the heart, which then I combine with spirituality and leadership. I went back to school for business and I had run healthcare companies and had done a lot of stuff on the executive level. But when I combined that together, it was a formula that I think I was just naive. Like I've shared with you, Linz, where I'm just like 2008, when there was a crash, I'm like, Hey, I'm leaving everything I know. And I'm starting a private practice. And my dad's like, you have lost your rocker. (laughs) Why would you leave? I was an executive of large healthcare company. He's like, why would you leave? as president of this healthcare company to go start a practice, you're walking away from a salary like that day and everything that you've worked for. But it was a calling. It was a calling on my life. I couldn't, honestly, I could not say no to it because every day I'd wake up. I'm like, I've got to go reach people. I got to help them. I spoke, I started speaking for free. I started helping people. And then that really was word of mouth because when your passion is so much the fuel of your why, why you're doing it, it wakes you up. You don't even need your alarm clock. You are just fueled. And so when you hit tough times, like we just hit in 2020, listen, in 2020, all of my speaking went away as a keynote speaker, all that went away. So what did I do? It was like, okay, well, every Monday, I'm just getting on for free. And I'm going to start speaking grassroots like I did before. Because you can't stop whether you're getting paid or not when it is your calling, you just want to, you have to almost get it out. I feel like a kid with... (laughs) You know, you got to get your like uh, ants in your pants. You got to get it out. I just have to get it out of my head Uh because you know that it's of service to someone. And I don't know when I post or talk or share who it's going to help. I just pray. And, and that post that we'll get to, I can't plan out my posts because it comes when it comes inspired what to say. I just, I have to like pull over sometimes and just start writing. Yeah. But that was one of those things. I was like, I woke up. I was like, well, okay. Pep talk time. (laughs) So that's what's led me. I feel blessed to be able to coach and help people on a daily basis and do it at a level where I feel the pay it forward movement that you've heard me share about and um, now kindly, but the people I get to help, you know, I may be someone in a small section of the world, but sometimes the people that I get blessed to help, they have a very big reach. So I feel the ripple effect is if you could help that human be the best version of themselves, a kind version and the best version and reach their peak potential. I sleep very well at night, no matter when my last day is going to be, because I feel like, wow, that person's going to ripple on and really touch a lot of lives for the better. So that feels Mm. really good. And you have had the, just the blessing of getting to work with some top names in business, in sports. Um, and I, if there's a word that I feel like I associate with you when I hear you talk and, and just the topics you cover, it's resiliency. And obviously that has a lot of implications in the sports world. You've gotten to work Mm -hmm. with some of the top athletes, but I I think we all got to learn a lesson about our own resilience in the last year. So Mm -hmm. as we start to unpack this, our pep talk for everyone, our love pep talk, what What do you hope people bring into the new year when it comes to their own mental resiliency? Well, I just want everyone to just pat themselves on the back or give themselves a hug because you made it. 
you made it (laughs) if you're listening to this. And that's an accomplishment because when the next tough day comes, I want you to remember you got through one of your hardest days Mm -hmm. and even years. So never forget that. That already proves your resiliency. And the other part of this is don't forsake the lessons that you learned in 2020 because those lessons are going to be the things that help you so that you're smarter, wiser, so that those stones you step on so that you can keep getting higher and whatever that is. And so you're building a muscle. We just worked. We had the hardest workout we probably ever had in a long time. And we just built muscle and that muscle is strong. So now you want to keep tending to it. And we are much stronger than we think of. And I always go back to reframing when you have a tough time and You've heard me share about this, but my friend Mary lived through the Holocaust or Helen, who's 96. Like I look at my mentors who've endured even tougher times than I could ever imagine. And they look at this and say, you've got it. So we're looking, I'm looking at you and I'm hoping everyone listens to say, we've got this. And you just proved it to yourself that we got through one of the toughest times in our generation right now. And we are more resilient, which means we are stronger and better together. And that's the other thing with powerhouse women and everything you created, Lindsay, and this whole group and everyone listening, the community is what helped get us through this too. And we need that. So don't forsake that relationships were part of resiliency. And you need those relationships to get through it because it's really hard to do by yourself. Yeah. Oh, it's, I mean, it, it did it. I think it reminded us of what we already knew to be true and made us rely on some of those most fundamental truths about life and and connection and community. And there were some beautiful gifts, a lot of tough times, but a lot of beautiful gifts that came from it. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. I want to talk a little bit about this post you did because it was one of those. And I love that you share, it just comes to you and you have to write it right then and there because I felt it. And I don't know if anyone else has had this experience where you read someone's post and you just want to like stand up out of your chair and like fist bump. But this was one of those posts and there was a part for me that really hit me. I I wrote it down so I could have you just expand on it. But you had this great post. Everyone, if you're not following, it's just the coach Dar. Is that right? No, no dots. No. Okay. The coach Dar on Instagram. And you said this, you said for me at this point, I truly feel like this is going to be an awesome building year than a championship year to follow, which I immediately drew the parallel to sports, of course, but talk to us about what you meant by that and what you really Mm -hmm. see this year can mean for Mm -hmm. all of us. Think about, we just went through potentially a setback last year, 2020. And what's the greatest, you know, that quote that the setback is setting you back, uh, setting you up for the greatest comeback. The setback is the come sets you up for the comeback. So here we are, we know we just came out of something tough and it's like, we, we just were hiking Camelback mountain and we, we lost uh, all of our breath and we were like, I am exhausted. How are we ever going to make it to the top? I can't do it. So it's like, we went through midway of the mountain and we were just like, can't do it, but we caught our breath. We have this chance to start again and we're in that, we're, we're climbing back. We're in that transition. We're, we're the making of, and I shared in that post, I love the 30 for thirties documentaries, the E sixties. We are the making of every one of you listening right now. Your life is the making of something. So here we are. 2021 is really about what I was saying in my life. And I see it for others is this is the building year. We're putting all the pieces either back together or reconfiguring our team, reconfiguring how we want our life. And we're going, wait a minute. I look back and that didn't necessarily work for my team, me, uh, the group we're a part, the community. But maybe if we shift, maybe it's some people in our life. Maybe it's the things that we do in the morning. Maybe it's our routines. We're shifting, we're rebuilding. And once we do that, which that doesn't happen overnight, if you look at any championship team, it did not happen overnight. It was years in the making. So your life is years in the making. So I think if we looked at 2021 and it gives us some breathing room as this is your building transitioning year, this is the building of then 2022 and not to say 2021, you can't hit that championship year now. I mean, shoot, you could go first, second quarter, build halftime, you come out of the gate by the by the last quarter of this, you could be hit a home run and you could win. You could win literally the World Series, but it could also be the transition. And then we get to 2022 and it's just going to be knock it out of the park. And I just feel in my life, 
I get these, we all go through energetic flows, you know, not every flow is it, not every year is a championship year. No team wins every year for the literally the time that they're in history of the making of the team. It goes to ebbs and it flows just like our life does. And there is an energy that I feel I have hope for 2021 that we are all going to be this in this transition. There's light. We see some great things that are happening. And then I feel like we are going to really be able to take all these innovative things that we've created and technology and ideas and how we want to do life and really hone it in by the time 2022 comes. So mm -hmm. that's what I meant by building of a championship year. So I, so, you know, people used to talk about the Suns, like, oh, the Suns, they're like three to five years to a championship a few years ago. So we're almost to that championship year and you could feel it right now within the team. And I feel that with even in my life, I'm like, oh my gosh, I could feel the championship year is coming. I don't know what that looks like yeah. fully, but you feel it. I love the terminology too. And just to give purpose to the season before the championship yes. year, whatever that looks like. So what are mm -hmm. some of the things that we can do? Like, what are some of the tangible things that we can be using this time for? If we're mm -hmm. looking at it through the view of right. being our building season, however long that is, it's a month, it's six months, it's right. a year, it's right. two years. What is the building season really for? Or what should we be focusing on during that time? Well, first, in order to build anything great, you have to have some reflection time. So if you haven't already set that reflection time, I just ask you to honor yourself and honor that, that you set time, take out a piece of paper, put on some good music that gets you into the zone, maybe pour yourself a glass of wine and just sit there for a minute and reflect if you haven't already done this and just say, not just 2020, but you can look and say, what in your life thus far, what's worked really well for you that you want to honor and carry forward? And write that down. That's what you want to bring in going forward because you know that works. Just like mm -hmm. the, the culture of a team, you're like, you know what? When we do this, this works really well. We want to hold on to that. But then you have to look at a team and you have to look at the culture and you have to look at everything. You have to go, okay, what didn't work? And so you have to sit on that other side of the page that you're writing on and go, okay, what didn't work for me? Maybe it's like, you know, I snoozed my alarm every day. I... I did not do that. I'm just saying you might have been able to. I have my, uh, my Alexa across the room. And mm. uh, I told you I play my good wake up music. But you want to be able to like set those little habits that weren't working for you and reframe them. But you have to sit down and write what did not work. Maybe it was honestly too, not just your routine, but maybe you realized, well, my relationships were so important to me. And I love how I started to honor them. But I was not so good before that and keeping up with the important relationships in life. So going into 2021, the rebuilding of a championship year, who are the people that you want to put around you that you want to reconnect with or new people that you want to reach out to because you want to learn something new? We only get as good as the level of our personal development. So if you are not working on your personal development, whether that's emotional, mental, spiritual, physical, financial, whatever that is, if you're not working on it, you stay status quo and you can't have a championship year. So in this time that you're taking to honor to figure out how to build that, you also have to plan in, okay, I want to make sure that I'm doing either the mentoring sessions or coaching sessions, or I just started read a book a day, but it's condensed where you could read it in 15 minutes. So it'll, it'll come out to um, the plan, but you could basically read a book a day. So I've committed to doing that for the year, taking off the weekends but I'll read every day as part of my morning routine. So those are things that I'll be able to pour into that could only lead for greater growth. What is it for you? What are the people around you? You know, are they lifting you up or are they pulling you down? If they're people that are constantly making excuses all the time, you're not going to have a championship year. Cause remember to be on the championship team, you're either the starter you're on the bench or you're off the team. Okay. Mm. So you need to be the starter in your life. You need yeah. to be the starter. And what makes a starter in a game? It's the person who is using their gift to their highest ability. That's honing that gift that works mm. it every day that works on building, not only themselves, but they're really good leaders on bringing the right people around them. And they empower other people because when the other teammates rise up, they rise up. So it's a win-win. 
So you want to look at that for the people that are around you. You want to look at what you're pouring into yourself. You want to look at what worked and what didn't work. You know, in sports, Mm -hmm. we look at film every day to say, how is literally how you just played last night? We have to review it, critique it, say what worked good, and then move on. So do that as you go through this year and say, when you're reflecting in the morning, what do I want to make sure happens today? How do I want to show up today? Set the intention for your day for a championship day and year. And then at night, go back. This takes literally a minute. Go back and go almost like post game. Now what work in post game? What work today? What can I shift tomorrow? 1%. We're not saying do everything drastic, but you start making these subtle changes and you'll start building out and having the ability to have a championship share. And one last thing is when you also sit with this paper or another sheet of paper, because I this is exactly what I do every year, is... I want you to write down whatever comes to your heart, billionaire ideas. I mean, literally anything as big at, you know, you call it, isn't it the unicorn? Unicorn dreams. Unicorn Unicorn dreams. Storming. Yeah, exactly. Like let that be where you also write all the things that you hope happen, how you see your life and where you, how do you want to be living? You know, for one of my buddies, he's like, if you put me out in a shack in the woods and I have people that just come out to see me once a month, that's success to me. That's what he wants. <laughs> yeah. Someone else is like, I want to be, you know, where I'm running a company. Another person wants to live on the water. I don't know what your lifestyle, what you want it to be, but write it out, write out yeah. all of the things that you want to do, because if you don't, you won't ever be able to create that vision and set the intention and then set the goals to be able to achieve it. It's so good. Oh man, that power of the reflection. And I want to dive a little deeper into what you talked about with the people around you, because one of my favorite things about you is that you have intentionally surrounded yourself with what you say, a best friend at basically for every decade. So you have your yeah. amazing 90, what is Helen? 95, 96, 96 year old Helen, all the way down to your best friend's daughter. I think it is. Who's, you know, 13. In, right. So talk about what that has added to your life. Did you do that intentionally? Or did you start to just realize you kind of had these amazing people around you and yeah. what can we learn from that? I mean, I, now I want a 96 year old yeah. best friend. <laughs> Well, you can meet Helen and she okay, would love great. to have you as a best friend. Done. But uh, so I, what happened is over time, someone just, people would always say to me, Dar, you have an old soul. Like literally the condo complex I live in is, I think is for retired people. <laughs> so I'm, I love literally uh, the elderly. I, I just love them, but I have an old soul because I love learning. It really stems from this passion of learning, but I love all people. So I love what makes them tick. So here it was. I had a lot of older friends in their like (laughs) 80s and 90s, 70s, 80s, 90s. And I was like, hmm. So then after I realized, I was like, oh my gosh, I have a friend who's 90, 80, 70. I started, I was like, I have, I, and it became clear. I have really like a good, solid best friend in every decade. I was like, wow, this is awesome. And I'm like, well, I guess that helps keeping my perspective on all things because we should we should be open to everyone. You know, you don't want to get Wayne Dyer said this, I didn't, but he said, you don't want to get to where you're the older we get, the more rigid we get where it's my way or the highway. He's like, you don't want your body, your mind, or your spirit to be rigid. You want to be like Mm. a palm tree. So in a palm tree, it bends in a storm and it comes back up and never breaks. So if we could stay mentally, emotionally, physically agile, like the palm tree, then that means we could learn from a 13 year old, no different than we can learn from a nine year old. And boy, when we're 80 or 90, we should be able to say, what can I learn from this 13 year old? Good. If you find a best friend in every decade, because then you'll learn from all of their experience or their knowledge, or even just their witty wisdom, like a 13 year old. (laughs) I mean, I, I, it would be fun to sit down and actually look, I bet I have a lot of the decades covered, but you know, my Mm -hmm. obsession with the golden grannies, I probably could secure some additional besties to get my like seat on the golden grannies secured. Yeah, no, but I love it. And we should work on that. We will. Yeah, we will. Dar, it was kind enough to invite me to a Suns game and it was an amazing experience. If you don't know, the Phoenix Suns are like our, our NBA basketball team. And if you've heard me talk about the golden grannies, they are the 
dance team, you have to be 55 to audition and they do hip hop dances at the Suns games. And their oldest member, I think last year was 93. So it's definitely how I'm going to, that's what I'm looking forward to in my later years. But unfortunately there wasn't a golden granny sighting. So we'll have to go back, (laughs) but okay. Definitely. You know, you are, when I think about who you are as a person, I really think kindness is woven into your DNA, everything from your work with the pay it forward day campaign to now this new app that you are partnering with some, you know, very big names on bringing to the world. So will you talk a little bit about, I mean, has kindness always been a part of your life or how did that become such a big part of the work that you are doing? Kindness really has been always a part of my life because of my mom, my mom, we didn't have a lot growing up and yet my mom would literally pay it forward all the time. She would, she would, I could see her being so hungry and she, we'd be eating a sandwich. And if I said, can I have some of that, she'd just give it to me. Or if someone else, a stranger even asked, she'd be like, oh no, you have it. Or she she would tip the Dunkin' Donuts drive-through, you know, uh, attendants. I'm like, mom, you just got tips from the barber shop. She was a barber. You need that. And you're tipping the Dunkin' Donuts person Mm -hmm. and the drive-through. She's like, oh, you know, they need it. So, I mean, it didn't matter. I just saw all the time. And so that's just how I was brought up. And it just was a way of life. It's not even just a day. It's a way of life for us. And also God asks us to serve all the time. And it's not when it's, you know, a holiday, it's supposed to be just that we're serving and we're looking out for others to be other centered. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just walking by someone and, and you literally walk by them. A woman, I was walking in the airport. It was 12. I think it was almost midnight. It was late. No, it must've been 11 because it closed at 12 because that chocolate, um, the apple company, Rocky mountain candy company, they make those chocolate covered Uh apples with all those Reese's and all that. Well, I should not have been buying it, but I went and bought it because I was so hungry. And I'm like, I'm just gonna have a few pieces before I go to bed. (laughs) So I went and bought that. And as I was walking though, this lady who was getting off her shift, I could see she looked so sad. She worked at the airport. And I just said to her, ma'am, I'm not sure what happened in your day, but you seem sad. And I just bought this apple. I did not even touch it, but I would like for you to have it if that would make your day. And she started crying. She said, it's my six-year-old's birthday and I work three jobs and I didn't even get a chance to get him anything. Now I won't go home empty handed. So she's crying and then I'm crying. (laughs) But my point was, is you, if you just look, you will see that there are people in need or just maybe a compliment. So in that saying that kindness has always been a part of my world. I did get asked, I don't even know if it's six or seven years ago now to be the ambassador for our country for pay it forward day, which by the way, I thought that was a joke. I was like, this is this for real. And the guys from Australia who started the movement, Blake Beatty, he's amazing. And he's like, no, this is for real. I said, well, what do I have to do? He's like, unite your country to us. And at that time it was 70 to other countries. Now it's 86. I was like, oh, no big deal. Okay. Yeah. And this is all volunteer. He's like, yeah. I'm like, oh, sure. Okay. Yes, sure. I'll do that. <laughs> so I did not do it myself. We collectively as a whole, every year, we try to empower people to understand that this is a way of life. That has led me to a conversation where uh, Tim Tebow and Robbie Tebow, his brother, they got involved in Kindly. And Kindly is a, an app that was created. It hadn't launched yet. It just Uh, Martin Diamond is the founder of it. He is here in Scottsdale. He has a tech background and he wanted to create an app where there was no bullying or hate speech. You know, he would see his three Mm -hmm. sons get on social and there's just all this negative chatter and it just, it hurts people. And he said, you know, I don't know if this will work on that, but I'm going to create an app where when you get on, it does something good in the world and you can't share hate or bullying. So that was his premise for this. And I got introduced him, Tebow was in conversations with him and Robbie. And then Robbie had reached out to me and said, Dar, you literally, you know, oversee the pay it forward movement. We think this is where the movement can kind of live. And I had a conversation thinking I was going to maybe be an ambassador. And uh, it turned out I got asked to help basically run it with the group. 
and be a part of it, a founding member to bring it to the world and to fruition. And so it's a social media app that is the first social unity app where you get on. This is really cool. It's free to get on. Anyone can get onto this app, but to comment, post, or basically use it beyond the point of just observation, you have to give a one-time $1 donation to charities that are listed there because the goal is to raise $1 billion for charity. So wow. to use a social platform that unites us around the world, where a one-time $1 donation, you've now made your dollar donation. And if 1 billion people get to you know donate a dollar, we've reached our goal. And the other goal is to encourage 1 billion acts of kindness around the world. Because once you get on kindly, there's kindly guidelines. You could still share and post about your life and or your business or who you are. But we just say when you post, you post with a different lens. Like when you post on kindly, what are you posting about? If you're posting like a picture at dinner, you post about your friends, but maybe the, the write-up is just like what friendship means to you. Or if you're at a place, it's like, don't forget to go visit this local pizzeria. So we're trying to get to reframe you know, how we use social and yet it's still socially united. And here's the other cool part. This is the only social accountability platform, which I'm really big on accountability, where you cannot post hate or racism or bully anyone. It picks up algorithms. The only algorithms that this picks up is when you were to type anything that would be negative or hate speech. If wow. for some reason it got through, you would then give a, get a verbal warning that, you know, that's, we don't want that. And you'd have to ha take it down. The second time you're put on mute for 30 days. And the third time, if you were ever to do anything that was mean, that spread hate, that was uh, racist, or that was unkind or bullied, you'd be removed from the app and never let back on. <laughs> because wow. it's to protect all generations of people. So when you go to post something, you, you know how right now, if you've posted anything during this time, you're sometimes wondering, like, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what you could write something. I've written something about love. And I had someone like literally rip me apart on Facebook. I was like, what the heck? How, you know, how does this happen? So now you could have a safe space, be on a socially accountable platform. It's not being checked by all these other algorithms. You're not getting like, here's this ad because you just looked up that. None of that. <laughs> If there eventually there will be ads, but it's like the Super Bowl, all of the ads you see on the Super, Super Bowl, everyone sees it's not just targeted for one or two people. One of the things is we have these kindly cards too with kindly. And what's really cool is you could have your dog put on here. You could have your logo. You could have anything you want on the front of it. Mine just says, always be kind. And on the back, there's a QR code. And you could, by having these cards with you, it makes you proactive and looking for ways to go and do an act of kindness for someone. And when you leave it, they could take this and scan the QR code and they could actually send you an anonymous or you could connect, but a thank you or how the kindness touched their life. The stories that come in, mm. it's so great because overseeing pay it forward all these years, People always, we always want to know the story or how it affected, but we never had a way to track it or unite people in kindness. And now that's what these cars to do. They unite us around yeah. the world in kindness. So it's really cool. And it's just another way of, there's a, a line that I made up during this whole thing when we're building kindly, which is scroll less, serve more. Mm. And That's so beautiful. it's important. It's important for us to come on to social. But the point is, is I'm always looking at people's mental health. And the way we're going to change mental health is to actually be in service or with others. It's K-I-N-D-L-I dot org, or you can go to the Google Play or the App Store and download Kindly and try out and come because the way that this will catch on and will make kindness cool again is by people getting on and posting some fun content and about their world and their life and by the way, we have kindly stories. There's where there's Insta stories here. We have kindly stories, which we curate and there are kindness stories pulled from all around the world that lift wow. you up. So it's I really mean, awesome. Even just think about like a, a bonus to being able to come back to this pep talk is to have something like that every day where you feel inspired to pay it forward, to show up to even like you said, just give a kind word or a smile right. to someone else. 
That's right. So beautiful. Right. So uh, you shared the URL and where we can find it. What's the best way to get involved? Just download it, start to, yes. you know, donate your dollar, share it with friends. Yeah. What, how can we support? It would really be great because this is grassroots. You know, Tim Tebow is a founding member. Titus O'Neill is a founding member, Carrie Walsh Jennings. And then we have a bunch of kindly featured ambassadors that have come on influencers. So what we're asking though is Kindness could all in this platform could only be as good as the people that, you know, we build a tribe around. It's called find your kind. So if people could come on to kindly download it and start using it and then asking other people to come on, but then use it, actually get on and post and share things. You could even start a cool story on Instagram and say, go watch the end of this over at kindly or and, and this could be another way of how you express yourself. So we have a singer that's a Grammy award winning singer that she said, you know, the way I'm going to use this is I'm going to have kindly be where I go and find singers that would have never been noticed. And I'm going to highlight them on kindly. And it made me think this is perfect because every social platform has a different part of our personality. You know, how we share on Instagram is one part of our personality, how we share on Facebook is another. How people cheer on TikTok is a completely another. And then Twitter's another. So think of this as, I mean, I would love for people to be on Kindly more because it'll help your mental health for sure because the content you'll see. But this is another platform that you get to share a part of who you are or what you want to share. You could set up yeah. a Kindly platform for your business and share all the good that your business does or the culture of your company. You could share Kindly as, as part of, you know, your way of you wanting to share just the different features. And again, not all the stories have to be puppies and rainbows, but it's just yeah. another part of who you are that you get to share and have it be a safe space that, you know, when you post, as long as it's something that's going to, you know, do something to ha lift someone up, or it's kind even if you're saying, Hey, I'm struggling today and just wanted to put that out there. And I, but I saw this rainbow today, or it's just a tough time. Other people will come on and encourage you but you're not mm -hmm. going to have people bullying you or saying, you know, unkind things to you. So it's exciting. It's the internet home. I think we've all been waiting for. Yes. If so, anyone's seen the social dilemma, this is the yeah, answer. Yes. yes. So everyone, we will of course link the name. It's kindly with an I and we'll link all of it in the show notes. But man, as we start to just wrap up, this pep talk, this 2021 pep talk for the new year. What is your, uh, I was going to say, what is your wish, but I think there's actually a more powerful question I can ask. What piece of advice do you have for the women and men who listen to this podcast, who, who have a big idea on their heart, something that has been, has been gifted to them to go and serve others. Mm -hmm. What's your biggest piece of advice for really maximizing this year, whether it's your building year mm -hmm. or whether it's your championship year? I would say lean into it. Number one, if it's that calling on you that you've had, but you've been afraid, I just want to remind you in 2020 people, there was a lot of loss in a lot of ways. So it was a lot mm. of rebuilding. So if there's ever a year to try anything, try it now. Cause you yeah. know, whether it works or maybe it doesn't, you're still going to learn from it. But people are the most, I feel like people are so ready to help right now others. And I see this energy and this passion for everyone really rooting everyone on this coming year. So if there's that calling, call someone, tell someone about it, post about it, like make this, hold yourself accountable this year to say, I'm going to try it. Cause I rather you live this yeah. year saying, I'm so glad I did rather than I wished I had. So do it, set that intention out, call someone tonight or whenever you listen to this and then say, this is what's been on my heart. I don't necessarily maybe know the next step. This is that person talking to someone on the phone saying, I don't know, maybe the next step, but do you know, can you help me on this? Because just by sharing it, I know just even Lynn's with you and I talking, we would maybe, I might share something and you might say, oh, Dar, I know someone and it helps mm. me because I just had to say it. Otherwise I can't receive help if I don't share it. 
So yeah. make this your year, you know, make this your year. I just, I've been reading something and I follow Jesse Itzler, but build your life resume. So I'm really work. I bought my, it's called big ass calendar. So I yes. bought it because <laughs> I'm so much about making sure I'm living my life rather than my life ruling, like work ruling me. And I love what I do so much so that I'm like, okay, I've got to make sure I, I haven't taken a vacation in five years. We got to change that. <laughs> mm. But I feel like I don't have to take a vacation. So it's kind of a conundrum, but all to say, you have to, you have to make the intention that you're going to do it. So tell someone is number one, seek help, find the people that are already doing some of it, or that could help you brainstorm it and ask them, do you mind if we brainstorm or I could call you for 30 minutes or zoom and you could help me work through this and then who you might know? You couldn't yes. believe who all the, you won't believe all the people that are out there that want to help. You just have to be willing to ask and then start. And remember, it's not going to be perfect right out of the gate, but that's why we call it building. You're the making of no team was ever great right out of the gate. No great company was never great right out of the gate. It's years of just working through it. I mean, powerhouse women has evolved so much mm -hmm. and it's why it's so great now, but it's been all of the things that you've learned along the way and mm -hmm. where you're going to learn even from here. So if there's ever a time to try something, it's now. So do it. 2021 is your building year to your greatness. This is the making of your story. So start, start filming it, start writing it and start sharing it. I don't think we could end in any more of a powerful way. I'm so grateful for you. So grateful for your friendship, for who you are in the world. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you for kicking our new year off with such a bang. I I'm just so excited already to go back and listen to this episode <laughs> once we're done. Well, I love you so much, Lindsay. I love all that you've created and, and thank you for, um, making it so that I don't do it alone because it's really helped during this time. And I'm grateful for the community and our tribe and everyone. And just that anyone who listens to this, I'm grateful that you listened all the way through <laughs> and then go make 2021 really awesome. And by the way, if you have to take some breaths along the way, take a deep breath. This isn't, this is your journey. So make it work for you, but always get back up. Never count out that you're yourself out. You're in this game all the way to the end. Oh,